So, so this is uh, what what I call the sixth session, the late humans, and I'm very happy to chair this last session. It was a sort of, of tradition in this academy to have the chairman, to have the, the president and the chairman for the first session and the organizer in a way, uh, or the godfather of, uh, of the workshop for the last session. So you will have me for the last, very last session, very short session, but you will see, surely a very beautiful session. So the first, the first speaker will be Professor Alexei Tikhonov, Alexei, Alexei Tikhonov from Russia, uh, proposed the presence of humans of the extreme north of Siberia, connecting with the remains of animals during the late Pleistocene. And we, we are loving the same, the same, the same what? The same mammal, Alexei and myself, we are loving the mammoth. Isn't it, Alexei? Okay, we are hearing from your conference. Dear colleagues, uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm very grateful to Academician Capens for the invitation on this workshop and also the Pontifical Academy of Sciences for the excellent organization of this uh, workshop. I want to bring you now on the coast of Arctic Ocean. And uh, you will see that this is a unique place because uh, permafrost here uh, have a deepness, uh, depth around uh, one kilometer. So we have one kilometer of frozen organic. And uh, by our estimation, it takes the period of time between uh, half of million years ago until now. And of course, uh, the preservation of the organic material in permafrost is excellent, which gave for us, especially for paleogenetics, uh, good chances to get uh, long chains of uh, DNA. It's just uh, last decades, uh, our glaciologists finally decided and showed for us that during the last glacial maximum, it's around 20, 25,000 years ago, the terrestrial glaciers never covered northeastern Siberia in comparison with uh, northern Europe and the central Siberia. It means that uh, nearly all remains of the animals from the surface never removed by the terrestrial glaciers. And uh, as a result, we have thousands and thousands bones, carcasses of animals from the long period of the late Pleistocene history. It's just uh, 20,000 years ago the territory of northeastern Siberia was uh, much wider northwards. It's around uh, 400, 500 kilometers. All islands, which you can see now in the Arctic Ocean, they were a part of mainland. But on the turn between the Pleistocene and Holocene, uh, it was a process of melting starts due to the uh, a little bit raising of the temperature of the ocean. It, knows, it wasn't connected with the temperature of air. It was a temperature of water. And even now when we talk about uh, warming of climate, for northeastern Siberia, for this continental zone, it's much more important the temperature of water. And you can see uh, that uh, on the normal slopes, on the coast of uh, Arctic Ocean uh, formed the special uh, Yedoma deposits. It was a lot of discussions. This is alluvial, 
or loose deposits, but finally the majority of uh, geologists and glaciologists, they decided this is a loose. And uh, the percentage of ice it's, uh, in such deposits, between 17 and 80 percent. So each year, uh, Russian Federation lost thousands and thousands square kilometers of territory due to this melting. Uh, within the 20th century, we lost already five islands in uh, East Siberian and Chukchi Sea. And we expect that uh, this process will be continued uh, the nearest some hundred years, and it's maybe we go uh, inside the mainland for 200, 300 kilometers. And, uh, but for us, it's uh, paleontologists. It's a very good process, because from these slopes, we receive the numerous remains of animals. But unfortunately, nothing about humans. This is a mysterious way from Asia to North America. Until the end of 20th century, no any direct evidences, no remains of humans, no human sites in, on no, northeastern Siberia. And, but on the other hand, on Alaska, it's already maybe a dozen of uh, pale late Paleolithic sites. And only in the uh, 70s, the first site, Bireloch, was discovered and described. And our American uh, friends and colleagues, they were very satisfied because it exactly fits to their uh, axiom of American archaeology that first humans migrate to North America around 12, 13,000 years ago. This is the age of uh, Bireloch human site. But at the beginning of this century, we received outstanding results. And first of all, this is a site, Yana site, Rhino Horn site. Later, I will uh, show for you why it's Rhino Horn site. And uh, this site is still excavated until now. You can imagine it was discovered uh, nearly 17 years ago. And uh, the age is 28,000 years ago, BP. And uh, on the other hand, a little bit, uh, of course, not connected with northeastern Siberia, but uh, near polar Ural, uh, it was discovered another human site, a much older, 37,000 years ago, Mamantave, Korea, but it's geographically already northeastern Europe. And uh, of course, we have no direct evidences except this uh, uh, scarce number of human sites, and we tried to find indirect evidences of presence of human in uh, different corners of northeastern Siberia. And of course, uh, these uh, evidences should be supported by the dates. And uh, here I mentioned that it can be artifacts, but again, it should be artifacts from organic material, from bones, from uh, tusks, an example, from horns, uh, presence of domestic dogs, and some other evidences. And we talk always about uh, mammoth fauna. It's very interesting fauna which can be comparable with uh, recent uh, fauna of savanna in Africa. It's the same pyramid. A lion on the top, huge uh, big herbivores like elephants and uh, rhino, the same woolly mammoth and woolly rhino in Siberia, and the group of other uh, animals. It means that the landscapes looks like should be quite similar. And I want uh, to emphasize that uh, majority of the species of this uh, fauna survived until now. It's only maybe 20, 25% of species uh, really were extinct. 
In 2012, it was a very interesting discovery in the mouth of Yenisei River. It's a western, north of the western Siberia. Uh, we found the nearly complete uh, carcass of uh, woolly mammoths, male, uh, it's around uh, 12, 14 years old animal, so-called Sopochnaya karga mammoths. And uh, at the beginning, uh, we decided to collect everything, then try to show for archaeologists, for trossologists, because it was some damages on the bones, on the tusk of these mammoths. And uh, archaeologists immediately found some uh, damages, and which, uh, by their opinion, were done by humans. The article about this uh, animal was published in Science three years ago. One, it was uh, some kind of uh, wound in the jugal bone, but as for me, I don't understand how human can uh, do this, but archaeology, archaeologists usually have much better fantasy. Even they uh, uh, make a model of the tip, stone tip, which uh, was used by humans. Also, they found uh, different damages on uh, ribs, on scapula. On the bottom, you can see this uh, tip of the tusk of these mammoths. It looks like this, uh, somebody tried to uh, took slices from uh, this tusk. And on the top, this is a bison bone, uh, which uh, also has uh, some traces, some cut marks which uh, our archaeologists uh, think also were done by humans. We collected also some stones, but uh, unfortunately this is just uh, broken stones, not a real artifacts. Archaeologists rejected to accept this as a stone tools. But the most interesting that the date of this find, it's nearly 45,000 years ago. It's interesting because uh, the territory of uh, northern Siberia, uh, now we know this, it was a refugia, one of the refugia for so-called mammoth fauna. Uh, woolly mammoths, Pleistocene bison, Pleistocene horse survived into the middle and uh, late Holocene in this zone. So it's uh, somebody uh, of our uh, anthropologist, they suggest the hypothesis that probably the man who operated with this uh, Sopkarga mammoths 45,000 years ago, maybe can be Neanderthal man, or maybe the hybrid between <laughs> Neanderthal man and Denisovan man. Yeah, because it was uh, Maybe they try to escape to the north, follow the uh, glaciers. And on this map, uh, I just show for you uh, that uh, in the right corner, you can see the delta of Lena River, and uh, to the right, where this uh, dates, this is a valley of Yana River. And again, a very, very early date. It's again very close to 45,000 years ago, so-called uh, Bungetol site. And uh, it's, it's not a, a real uh, site with cultural uh, layers. 28,000, it's again, uh, this is a Yana site. And uh, 11,000 on the top, this is a, just uh, one find, which I show later. And this is a Bungetol uh, site. This is an accumulation of uh, different bones. And again, our uh, archaeologists, they found then on this uh, homerus of uh, wolf, Canis lupus, it was a damage which uh, they, uh, for their opinion, was done by ancient humans. 
Also on this uh, site, uh, we found the rhinos cupola with uh, some also damages, which they, for the opinion, again, uh, were done by humans. So they decided that it should be a human site here. I visited maybe five times this place, but all my efforts uh, failed to find any artifacts, first of all. And uh, Woolly rhino, it's a very interesting animal because um, they have a very specific adaptation to two landscapes. They can easily leave one ecomorph uh, live in the forest and another one in the open landscapes of tundra. And the first horn, front horn, it was very flattened and uh, quite dense. So it's possible to make some kind of tools from uh, this horn. And here you can see the spare head from Bolshoi Lachovsky Island. It's uh, 11,400 years ago. And it's very interesting because the uh, latest uh, date, what we have for Wuli Raina for this zone, it was around 14, 15,000 years ago. But uh, this spare head absolutely the same as a spare head from uh, rhino horn site or yana site, what I say in the beginning. Why rhino horn site? Because one man, local man, found such spare head, bring to archaeologists, archaeologists ex start to examine this place and found finally this late Paleolithic find. We use this spare head to for uh, advertising of our researchers, try to get funds uh, from uh, our government, which uh, usually doesn't want to do this. Now it's a little bit better. And uh, it's interesting that uh, until now, the even basement of this spare head is quite solid. It's very strange because you know that the horns of rhino, it's just hairs which are concentrated and uh, stay together. And this is a tip of this spare head. And uh, on this map, uh, you see the island on the top. Uh, this is a site where it was found, this spare head from uh, Horn of Rhina. But on the bottom, you can see also it's uh, two points, one and two. It's also, uh, spare heads, like this one. This is a from Yana site, but we found uh, now already in uh, two different places. The same technique, and uh, it's interesting that, an in example, this uh, spare head from uh, Rhino Horn on Yana, it's 28,000 years ago, and on Lachowski Island, it's just 11,000 years ago. It means that this uh, how to say it's artifacts, methodics, producing of these artifacts, the same long period of time, more than 10,000 years ago. It's uh, from the new site. I call this Asegai, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> but that's again, uh, uh, as the previous one, is this is a, a task, task of mammoths. They have a special technique how to make tasks straight and then they start to slice this task. And you can see this uh, task already was sliced by uh, humans on the Yana side. So it's, uh, for our opinion, they concentrated nearby such accumulations of bones, of tasks, just to use tasks as a material for their artifacts, for their tools. And uh, this is a just picture from uh, Sungir site. This is a uh, Eastern Europe uh, Russian plain. But it's interesting that uh, spare heads, which are done from uh, also mammoth ivory, absolutely the same as we found on the coast of the Arctic Ocean. Another evidence of the human pres uh, presence, of course, it's domestic animals. And we found uh, two puppies of uh, 
dogs, and it, was, it takes uh, maybe five or six years. Many specialists, uh, they are did the different uh, researchers try to understand this is a wolf or dog, but now finally it's, everybody agrees that this is a really a Paleolithic dog. And it's against uh, indirect evidence that humans stay in this place uh, 12,500 years ago. This is a, maybe a three, four months puppy. Horses, also very interesting. It's uh, until uh, the beginning of this century, we think that uh, Pleistocene horse extinct in Siberia on the turn of Pleistocene and Holocene 10,000 years ago. But now we have uh, nearly historical date for this animal. Of course, it's not domestic animal. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, another problem raised up because local people, Yakut people, they have very specific breed of horses, which can survive uh, even during all severe winter without any protection, just stay in the forest. They have a very specific metabolism, and during the example strong uh, frost, they just stay by hours and hours. They don't move and just wait when the temperature becomes a little bit uh, higher. This is another interesting uh, case. This is a baby mammoth, yucca mammoth, 34,000 years ago. It was uh, killed by cave lions, and uh, they make uh, holes in the skin of the animal. But also, some cuts, uh, this is again lions, but some cuts was done by uh, humans. And of course, immediately our uh, archaeologists, they uh, show for us a beautiful picture how it was happened. So poor baby mammoth was uh, killed by a pride of uh, lions, cave lions. Very aggressive group of uh, Paleolithic humans come, push away lions, and, and took away, you cannot imagine, all bones except the uh, fits. It was empty, totally empty. Why they did this, uh, as for me, I don't understand. But it's again uh, indirect evidence that 34,000 uh, years ago, humans tried to do something with this animal. And so on this map, I just uh, want to show what we have now. I remind you that it's until 1970, it was empty, all north of uh, Siberia. No any sites, no any evidences. Now we have uh, at least uh, three sites. And uh, uh, in the ocean, you see, this is a Zhokhov site. It's already, uh, of course, a Mesolithic site 8,000 years ago. But it's very interesting. You can see also how far the mainland is going to the north, because uh, 8,000 years ago, this site is situated on the mainland. And also, it's uh, again Yana site, uh, Kuria on the west, and uh, all other dates. This is a, what I say indirect evidences of human presence. And of course, uh, all such things very closely connected with the question of human penetration to the North America. As for me, it's for me no doubts that uh, during the last glacial maximum, without terrestrial glaciation in this zone, with Bering Bridge, of course humans can easily penetrate to America, go to America 20, 25,000 years ago at least. But you know that it's on the territory of Alaska, the earliest date, it's only around 13,000 years ago. But uh, I don't know why uh, the archaeological society doesn't accept some uh, very interesting results of our colleagues from Colorado. They found the evidences that uh, 20, 22,000 years ago, the humans uh, occupied 
the territory of recent state Colorado. Also, I really trust to our uh, colleagues from uh, Argen uh, Argentina, from uh, South America, from Chile, which also show for us that uh, humans uh, stay in South America much earlier than uh, 12, 13,000 years ago. But I want also to uh, say that uh, it's need to be very accurate with these indirect evidences. And we just show them, but uh, it cannot be 100% sure evidence because uh, thermocarst process uh, in the permafrost sometimes make uh, some many jokes for us, for scientists. We, sometimes it seems for us that we took the bone or the uh, mummified animal in situ, then try to make the date, and we receive uh, 800, 900 years ago. Because sometimes the animals uh, can fall down to the cracks. It can be collapse during the thermocarst process when more recent material fall down to the layers of much more ancient time, and then again frozen. And when you come, it's sometimes very hard to understand. It was really in situ, and this is a redeposited thing. So it's uh, such problem uh, sometimes uh, even uh, faced our colleagues. I remember I worked with colleagues in Chile, in uh, Patagonia. It's the same with ground flows. Maybe you know that it's, uh, at the beginning they think that uh, the ground sloths uh, survived until the middle of Holocene, but now it's, uh, they found that it's just turbulence of the layers. And when the more recent material go, uh, more ancient material go up to the surface, or it's taken by humans, they dig the Ultima Esperanza cave, for example, and then bring these bones, and these bones stay in the cultural layers of 5,000 years ago. But in reality, more than 30 dates in Patagonia show for us that uh, these ground sloths, giant ground sloths, extinct uh, 11, 12,000 years ago. So in such things also can be happened in the, with permafrost deposits. So it should be very accurate with this. Thank you very much.